Hi, I'm Dr. Howard Haft, and I'm the Deputy Secretary for Public Health Services in the Maryland Department of Health. What really excites me about public health is, is, is this, uh, is that I've, I've been forever restless in my career. I've uh, always wanted to know everything I could know um, about the world and about health. Um, so, like many other doctors, so I could fix those things. Um, and along the way, I've had an opportunity to um, provide um, information uh, in terms of research, um, neurochemistry, and other areas, um, because I was intensely interested in those things. I was able to also uh, provide health care to individuals in primary care and in emergency medicine, because those seemed to me to be great challenges. Um, but along the way, I also discovered that that there is a larger world out there uh, than, than just the focal worlds within research or within the individual delivery of care, and that, and that a lot of the solutions to uh, fix the broken world that we live in have to do with things that are outside of traditional medicine and are in the world of public health, those, uh, those important infrastructure pieces of health care. Um, the social determinants of health, um, and the ability to provide health to large populations, um, states and, uh, and other large segments of the world, um, that really is uh, at its heart what public health is. So in public health and in government, um, we obviously work with a large number of partners, both within government and outside of government, in the, in the hospital world, in the private provider world, in the general community, um, and, and the numbers of partners that we work with are, are legion. Um, I think it's, it's really important to understand that most of the world does not look at things through a public health lens. Uh, most of the world looks at it through a more narrow lens in the scope of what they are focused on. Hospitals look at the world through the, uh, as everything is a hospital. Individual providers in the community look at the world as individual patients seeing them one at a time and taking care of those, their needs, uh, and on and on. Um, public health has a much broader lens and looks at the world in, in a much more, um, in a much more equanimity basis. Um, and looks at the larger scope of things, that's hard for people to understand. Um, because when other partners um, try and understand the concepts of public health, they tend to, f to focus more on what their individual interests are rather than the broader interests. So, so there's a, a discussion that needs to go on um, with partners outside of public health to give them context um, to understand um, the world as it is seen through the lens of public health. So population health um, is described as taking care of a defined population, um, understanding what the population's needs are, and doing interventions to uh, improve the health of that population based on, on the understanding of the needs really assumes that if you're going to be successful in that, that you have to establish health equity. That means that there has to be the same level of health um, for all of the people in the population. As soon as that becomes out of balance, there's health inequity, um, you really are not serving the needs of the population. You're serving the needs of some of the population. Health equity demands a level set for every individual, so the same access to care, the same um, social supports. Uh, and once you have that health equity, um, then the um, that all of the indicators rise in concert. Among those that, that strike me as being pretty dramatic is, um, is first um, with Zika, uh, with the emergence of Zika a few years ago, um, suddenly uh, as a uh, new and, um, and, and threatening and, uh, and widespread um, emerging infectious disease, um, we suddenly needed to know where people who came in contact uh, with Zika and potentially carried a Zika virus in their blood, where they lived um, and where the areas around them where mosquitoes might um, come into contact with those individuals and then spread Zika to other individuals. 
Um, so through technology and healthcare informatics, we were able to develop some geo-mapping across the state, uh, be able to identify individuals who um, tested positive for Zika after traveling, um, and then do geo-maps and be able to uh, basically uh, obliterate um, the mosquito populations around those uh, areas at risk. That's just one example. I'm really much more um, encouraged and heartened by the broader example of how we're looking at medical informatics overall in the state by linking together um, the information, clinical information from electronic health records and clinical information from hospitals um, together with claims information across the state through our health information exchange, through CRISP, which is our statewide health information exchange, and provide uh, meaningful information to providers, to hospitals, and to others um, to do healthcare interventions. Um, and to layer into those healthcare information, pieces of information, also other important pieces of information that have to do with um, social disparities, which have to do with education levels, which have to do with income, um, which show us um, longevity uh, disparities between different zip codes and uh, even di between different census tracts, and to put all that information together in a meaningful way to help guide the delivery of health care in the state. So I'm really energized about the future of public health for a couple of reasons. The number one reason is that, is that in the 3,000 or so people who work with me um, in, in the Maryland Department of Health, in the Public Health Division, um, there are incredible numbers of young, energetic, bright, mission-motivated people who are out there every, every day trying to do a good and better job of providing healthcare and public health to the state of Maryland. Let's take care of populations as a whole. And that really brings public health into the forefront um, because public health has always been the, the way that we do that, the way that we serve communities and the way we serve large populations. Um, and we're now beginning to understand at a time when we know that our costs for healthcare in this country are far greater than they are any place else in the world. Our, per capita costs are more than $10,000 per person per year for health care. We're spending more than $3 trillion a year, that it's 18% of our gross domestic product. But despite that, despite those facts, um, we are nowhere near the top in terms of quality of health care for economically developed countries. I think we rank 19th um, out of all of the 119 economically developed countries, or someplace lower than that. Um, and, and our longevity, our lifespan on the average is, is no longer peaked, it's beginning to fall in, in this country. So, so the value proposition, what we pay for it, what we get for it is, is misplaced at this time. And we under, we're beginning to understand that we can't fix this problem that we have, low quality and high costs, with the same tools that created the problem. Um, and we need to go back and look at those different tools that public health has dealing with the social determinants of health and dealing with population health as the cure. And I think people are beginning to really understand that. And that gives me great faith in the future.